When you watch wildlife, you're struck by how independent they are and willful. They came into this world. They're not following anyone's plan. They didn't ask anyone's permission. They just came. It makes you stop and think. It's the same with us. Even in cases where our parents wanted us, they didn't want us particularly. They wanted a child. They didn't know who they were going to get. And we came out of their gene pool. And that's with wild animals. Once you come into the world, you want to be in the world, well, you find you have a lot of duties. Even if you're not there for anyone else's purpose, the simple fact that you've got a body means you have to take care of it. There's an interesting sutta where Deva comes to see the Buddha and talks about how the mind is trembling, the mind is fearful and anxious because of its duties, duties that have already arisen and duties that have yet to arise. We don't think of devas as having duties. They're supposed to be up there in heaven just having a good time. But all beings have duties. As the Buddha said, everybody except arahants has debts. We come into this world, but we bring a body, or we take hold of a body, and the body has its needs. And we need to depend on the suffering of others for our food, our clothing, our shelter, medicine. We have that chant every night to think about these things. Now society has come to a halt, come to a pause. We begin to realize how dependent we are on the suffering of a lot of beings just to keep going. And as the situation changes, we find that our duties will change. And that's one of our duties, is looking into what we need in order to survive. And the mind's basic mantra way deep down inside is, what's next? What do I have to do next? What do I have to do next? There's a constant sense of, I have to do something. But you realize, you were the one who came into the world. It's because you wanted to take on the identity of being a being, in this case a human being. That's why you have these duties. And so in the Deva's question to the Buddha, he said, is there any place that's free from the disturbances of duties? And the Buddha said, yes, there is a path. It involves sense restraint and it involves what he calls austerity. In other words, being frugal in the things you take in, in the necessities of life, and in terms of your sense experiences, the things you go looking for, the things you go listening for. In the old days we had catalogs, now we have the net. When we want to want something, we turn it on. In other words, not necessarily a need. A lot of times there aren't genuine needs. The body needs a certain level of nutrition in order to survive, in order to practice. A certain level of shelter, clothing, medicine in order to be able to practice. But the reason we have those reflections in the evening to remind ourselves, ourselves of how much is enough and how much is going beyond enough. And if you want to lessen your duties, you don't go beyond just right. In this case, it's just right for the purpose of the practice. We talk about the, the middle path. And lots of people have their middle path, and their middles are all over the place. The way you define What's a genuine middle path is asking yourself, well, what, the path to what purpose, the path to what goal? If your aim is power or wealth, certain things will be necessary. 
But then you find you take on more and more debts that way. The ideal thing is to find a way out and take on just enough debts in order to get out. And then, as the Buddha said, then you're free from debt. So we try to keep our needs in line. In terms of clothing, just enough to cover the body. Keep it warm and when it's cold outside, keep it cool when it's hot. To make it presentable. Food, you don't need food playfully to put on bulk. Just enough so you have strength to practice. Shelter, again, enough to protect you from the elements, and enough medicine to keep the body functioning properly. Those are our needs. Anything beyond that is extraneous. The more you give in to your desires, the more duties you'll have. So in terms of the requisites for the body, and it's interesting the Buddha uses the word bhajya, condition, necessary condition, requisite. You find the middle path that leads to the goal that allows you to practice. And as for the rest of the Buddha's answer to the deva, he says developing the factors for awakening. Mindfulness, analysis of qualities, persistence, rapture, calm, concentration, equanimity. In other words, it's the practice where you start with being mindful, and then you use your discernment in order to bring the mind first a sense of energy inside. That can be your food inside, your, your medicine inside, and then to calm it down. That's also a kind of medicine, also kind of a food. And this you develop. This is a duty. It's part of the duties of the Four Noble Truths. You develop the path so that you can comprehend suffering and find out where the cause is from. And you find the cause is coming from your desires. All these duties are duties because of our desires. So you abandon the desire. And then the mind is free from having to have duties. That's the pattern that's set out. And the pattern is so radical, the Buddha says that eventually you also you abandon the all, or you relinquish the all. The all here being everything having to do with the six senses. You find that you've gotten involved in this world of the six senses because of your desires. You've taken on all these duties that are occasioned by your desires. The only way out is to drop the desires, and then you're free. Now, for a lot of people, this sounds like extinction going out of existence. But simply, you're no longer taking on the identity of being a being within the realm of the six senses, within the world of the six senses. Now, how you would be described at that point, the Buddha says, you're immeasurable, undefinable, because people are defined by their, their desires, those desires that force the duties on them. Because as long as you're involved in space and time, that's the issue. Time keeps coming, coming, coming. What next? I've done this, but now what next? I've accomplished this, but what next? That didn't go well. What, what's next? What, what did go well? Well, what's next? The things you do in space and time. As long as they point only into space and time, we always have this what next, and there's always a duty that comes with that. That's when you can step out through disenchantment. That's when the duties are done. And John Munn makes this point, the Four Noble Truths. Oftentimes the Third Noble Truth is equated with nirvana. Well, it's the realization of nirvana, but nirvana itself is something that lies outside, because there's no duty with regard to nirvana. There's nothing you have to do at that point. That's why the Buddha said the task is done. So 
But until then, we have our duties. It's just simply a question of where you focus your desires. What that determines what duties you have to take on. And although the path may seem long, the not path is longer. The Buddha's images of a person driving a cart. As long as you stay on the road, the cart will be okay. So when you get off the road, then you break your axle. More work. Heavier work. So when the path of practice seems long and hard, think about how much longer and harder it is when you leave the path and go through the brambles and go through the rough countryside around. Because there's no way you're going to escape the fact that as long as you're in time, there are going to be duties. If you follow the path, though, that's a series of duties that will take you out to the point where the mind is totally undisturbed, totally free. So think about the fact that you're here because you wanted to be. Here meaning first here in the human realm. But if you're wise, you can also make here being you're here on the path. And so see the duties of the path as light, as opening of the door. As long as they seem heavy or onerous, you're not seeing things rightly. Because this is the path to freedom, and this is the way out. And it leads to a place of total rest, totally undisturbed. Not having to depend on anybody, not having to force your will on anybody. Again, you go there without having to ask anybody's permission. But unlike being born into the world, you're not placing a burden on anybody. Not on other people around you, and not on yourself. That's where all the burdens get put down. <laughs>